Hey guys, it's MG coming to you from Alberta, Canada, and it happens to be very cold outside today. Um, I'm going to show you guys how to do a shadow box, um, kind of from start to finish. It's one of Christina Rich's designs. We'll work on the family tree one today. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave some in the comments and I'll try and do my best to answer them. If you hear any background noise, I apologize. I have like five kids in the house, four of mine, and one is a friend. So it might be a touch noisy, but I hope not. <clears throat> anyway, so we're going to learn the shadow box. So as you can see on my Cricut Design Space, I actually already have it uploaded. But for those of you that don't know how, um, you can go into your file explorer. And typically when you purchase a design of Christina's, it'll go into your download section. So this button here. And as you can see, I have, <coughs> excuse me, I have the rainbow bridge one from Christina. So just to show you and give you an idea, um, if I double click this, it shows all the files within it. And you can click on extract all and then put them into a folder wherever you want it to be on your computer. I happen to have um, a folder that I've named 3D shadow box files right here. And I put all my shadow box files in here. So you can just right click and then go new folder, name it anything you want. <clears throat> and then if you double click on that, you can go click select folder and then just click the extract button here and it will put all the folders or the files there. I know some of you have said that you've had a really hard time um, seeing what, like where the S SVG file is, <coughs> excuse me. So when you're in File Explorer and you go to your downloads, if you actually click on the view tab up here, there is a box called file name extensions. And you'll notice if I uncheck it, my capture file, the extension has disappeared. If I check it, the extension shows up. So that will happen here as well. So you can see because I'm using a Windows machine, it is associated with Microsoft Edge. <clears throat> if I went back to my view tab here, unchecked it, the .svg disappears and it's hard to tell which is the SVG file. So I'm just going to add my extensions back. So that's a quick way of kind of seeing where your SVG file is. Anyway, so I'm going to close my folder there. I'm going to click on new project. I'm going to click sorry, upload. I was about to say new, but that would be wrong. I've already got it uploaded, but for those of you that haven't, you can click on upload now and then browse and go to the section where you've extracted all of your files. So for me, it's in the family tree shadow box. I click on family.svg and I can see that it is the family tree. You can name it over here in the top right, anything you want. <coughs> I like to use a naming convention, shadow box, and then what it is, family tree. So that if I'm searching in my projects later and I'm looking for a shadow box file, I can simply type in shadow box in the search bar and I'll bring up all of them. So it just makes life easier for me. I'm going to click upload. And for that specific file, Christina actually created some revised letters because the alphabet <coughs> with her original file did some funky things. I'll share the link um, that you can click on to find it, the revised letters, um, and just do the same thing with them. But for my purposes, I've already downloaded it and extracted it and saved it within the family tree shadow box folder that I have just for easy finding. So I've already got it here. I'm going to double, oops, pardon me. I'm going to double click it, brings it up. Again, I'm going to use my naming convention over under image name, shadow box, family tree, and then revise letters so that I know. And I'll upload it as well. So once I've got both of those uploaded, I'll click 
my revised letters and I will hold down the control key and then I will click my family tree. You can see both are outlined in green. And if you look on the bottom right here next to the my buttons, you can see two images are selected. So when I click add to canvas, it will add both of those. <coughs> Excuse me. Now on the right hand side are all of the layers. So if you think of a project, um, pieces of paper being stacked on top of one another, that's kind of what the layers are. So the very top piece of paper would be the very first layer, which is this R, and it just goes all the way down. This will be important a little bit later. For right now, this is a separate group, and these two are grouped together. Now, because I won't be using the original alphabet, I'm going to ungroup these, and as you can see, it makes both of them separate. I select the alphabet I will not be using and I just simply click delete on my keyboard and it gets rid of it. <coughs> I then click this alphabet and I go over here. I bring it where it's easily visible. And from there, I'm going to make my last name. So the first thing I actually do is I'm going to on the far right hand side where all of the letters are selected, as you can see, I then am going to click arrange and send to back. And the reason I do this is so that I can see all of my family tree shadow box layers at the very top and I don't have to scroll down all the time. Then I'm going to select my letters again. I'm going to ungroup them, top right button, and I'm going to spell the name I want. Now, just to make my life easier, I always just copy and paste the letter instead of using the original letter. So I'll control C, which is copy, and then control V, which is paste. And I do that with all of the letters that I need. My last name happens to be Gordon. G-O-R, D-O-N. All right. There's my last name, Gordon. Woohoo! So as you can see, they are not evenly spaced <coughs> um, vertically or horizontally. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make them even <coughs> um, horizontally. No, vertically. Um, so I'm just going to align them on the bottom. And that makes them all even along the bottom. There's two ways you can distribute them evenly. So what I've been doing is I've just been clicking in an empty space, going across and it selects all of those images within the box that I created. You can select each of them individually. I just find that more work. Um, go up into the top, you'll see a line and you can go distribute horizontally. Typically that puts all of the letters evenly spaced apart. Now, as you can see, the N, the edge of the N is this very edge of the black part at the top, this tiny area. So it's, it's spacing the letter between the O and the N from that tiny edge to the far edge of the O in the middle here. So if you look at the two of them, they're pretty evenly spaced. Sometimes it doesn't look evenly spaced <coughs> and it isn't necessarily pleasing to the eye. Specifically on the O and the R, that's driving me crazy right now. And I can tell the R and the D, they look further apart, even though they're not because it's the bottom edge that it's spacing. So if you want, just arrange your letters how you want. So just if you want to make them a little bit more pleasing to the eye, I wouldn't worry about making everything 100% even, just kind of make it look like it's good. Um, this is, I've already made my family tree, so this is just an example for you. Once I've rearranged them, I probably move them off alignment again. So again, I'll just align bottom to make sure they're all aligned how I want them to be, make any tiny adjustments I think might be necessary. Go from there. Okay, so once it's good and I'm happy with it, I'll select all of the letters again and I will click weld the bottom right here. 
and that makes it all one solid object. Once I've done that, I take my name over to the family tree, and I'm going to try to space it evenly so that there's enough space at the top and enough at the bottom, and that it looks even. I know if you'd like to adjust the size of your letters, you can certainly click on the double arrows here, and it'll make your letters bigger or smaller, if you want to go smaller. I personally like kind of just leaving them the default size. I think it's perfect and it doesn't look too too crazy. I think I've got it close to centered in terms of up and down. So then I want to center it on the page. Now this front page of the family tree is one layer. So as you can see on the right hand side, my layers, I've got my weld result. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my name, I'm going to hold down the control key, and I'm going to select just the top layer, which is this one <coughs> of the family tree shadow box. <coughs> Sorry. I'm then going to go over to the top menu, click align, and I'm going to center it horizontally, which makes sure that my entire name is centered um, left to right on that front page. Since both layers now are still selected, I'm going to click slice, and it creates two more layers. Both of them happen to be my name. So it's basically taken the name that I created and cut it out of that top layer. So now I need to get rid of my name. So I'm going to select my name and click delete, and select the second name it created, click delete as well. And now you can see I have my second white layer showing through. My name is there. All right, so my family name is there. I've got it all done how I want. I've got all of these letters. They're all individual. For my purposes, I highlight all of them. I then, <clears throat> pardon me, click group, top right button here. And then I hide it. I then select the layer group because it'll select all of the letters. Once again, I'll go over to Arrange, Top Menu, Send to Back, and it just brings my <coughs> Family Tree Shadow Box layers to the very top so they're more easily accessible for me. From here, you can change them into any color you want. I mean, go wild, go crazy. I'm not a person, <laughs> I love bright colors, but I also like a lot of contrast. So I typically do my top layer in black or a very bright color. And what I do is on these layers, I try to pay attention to the color saturation that Christina has created. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Pardon me. So for this one, I can see that this layer Christina's made very, very dark. And I happen to like um, the saturation points that she's created, I think it works well. So if I do choose a different color scheme, such as, say, purple, I'll try and stick with a dark purple to try and match the saturation so that it's it keeps that um, image of light to dark, the gradient that she's got going on, but it's still in a color that I very much prefer. So, I mean, you can... You can do anything. You can click on this little plus button and, and mess around with the colors individually. It really is up to you. Um, for me personally, you can... I I like purples. I like pinks. Um, yeah, go from there. So I'm just going to mess around with it a little bit um, and pick out some colors here. Now, as you can see, my tree is ready to be made. It looks like Cricut has adjusted it a little bit, so I will just simply change my width again to be seven and a half, and the height automatically changes to seven and a half. Now that it's ready to go, I will click Make It. Cricut, for whatever reason, organizes all of your sheets by color. So I usually spend this time picking out all of my colors and placing them in the order that Cricut has chosen 
so that I know when I am cutting everything out that it will cut out in order. I will then click continue and I will ensure that my maker is turned on. <clears throat> now that my maker has been turned on, it's getting itself ready, which is all sorts of fun. I will set my base material. For me, I have already saved my cardstock for intricate cuts. This is the one I typically use. However, if you do not have this, you can simply collect on, click on rather, browse all materials and just type in cardstock and press enter. <coughs> and here you will find all of the cuts with the name cardstock in them. You can select the cardstock for intricate cuts. You can click on the star on the right hand side and that will favorite it so that it always shows up in your base materials list. So I will click it and in the bottom right I will click done. Pressure I always personally set to more. You can do whatever you are good with. Your, each machine is different and will cut differently. Then I move over to my sh machine and I prepare everything. Okay, so I am back and I'm going to be making that family tree. So I pull out my blue mat. This is the one I'm going to be working with today. As you can see, it's got some, it's been well loved and well used. <coughs> I have my pile of papers organized in the order that they will be cut here. And I'll start with the first one, which is going to be white. Because my design is seven and a half by seven and a half, I know that I can use an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper. I line it up. I use my brayer to push it down, apply it to the mat, stick my mat in, and I make sure that everything is set properly on my screen and then I cut it out. <coughs> Okay, so it is done. I will eject my mat. And what I normally do is I flip my mat over. I get out my scraper tool. I bend my mat and I try to keep my paper flat. If my paper doesn't wanna come off, I will use my scraper and I'll just put it at the edge and just gently walk it off my mat until the whole thing is off safely. I then take my mat, move it aside, and I've got my design. As you can see, it is stuck in a couple of places. Hasn't cut all the way through. Sometimes I can pull it gently and it snaps off. Sometimes that doesn't happen and I will bring out an X-Acto knife, a cutting board, and I will just simply slice along the edge to pull it off. For now, it seems to have cut enough. All the pieces are coming off smoothly for the most part. I'll take my layer and I just tuck it under my machine because it's done and it'll be protected. And I will wait there and keep it there as I do more. And I'm back. My apologies, I have four kids at home today, so it is a little busy here. <coughs> Excuse me. So next I will apply my second piece of paper. Again, in the order that is displayed on my monitor. 
Insert it in. Oh, it reset itself for the second one. I wonder why. So I will choose cardstock for intricate cuts. And I will go again. I will continue this process until all of the layers have been cut. Once all of them are cut, then I will organize them and start the assembly. Okay, so as you can see, <clears throat> I now have all of my layers printed. I have my shadow box. I'm going to use this tape. I'm, it's from the Dollar Tree. It's nothing super fancy. Um, I've got my scissors handy that I'm going to be using. And that's pretty much it. So when I, oh, and the scraper. I use my little scraper because these things on the back of the shadow boxes hurt my fingers. So I thin them up using my scraper. So I've got my shadow box and they all come with an insert. So when I'm putting my layers together, I actually take my insert out and I just set it aside. And then I start with my layers. So I take my first layer, actually usually work this way, and I flip it upside down and I put it inside my shadow box and I pick a corner. So I typically work out of the bottom right corner and I just make sure that it's it's nice and snug against that right corner. You might notice that the shadow box itself kind of curves like half a millimeter or something very small. It doesn't really make a difference as long as it's as far down as it can go and as far to the right as it can go, then it's nice and snug. And as long as my other layers are snug as well, then I'm okay. So what I do is I take my tape and I usually just <laughs> connect it to my desk. This piece is gross. And I roll out a long piece. I don't know if you can see it, but I roll out a nice long piece. I just connect it to my desk, snip off the end. And then as I'm going through, maybe I'll do it over here for simplicity. I just cut off the size that I need. So, you know, a small square piece. And I peel off the little thingy and I'll stick it in the corner, as far in the corner as I can go. So I'll typically do that with all four corners. And I just leave my garbage over to the side for now. I usually throw it all in the trash once I'm done collect it all in a pile. Then I take my little pieces and I just place them in the corners. <clears throat> now for this top layer, I always generally put another tiny piece in the middle of each edge just to ensure that it's going to float um, nicely. I don't know how else to, to say that. Um, I want it to look, I don't want my layers to necessarily bend in the middle and the top layer has a tendency to do that because there isn't a whole lot of paper to keep it straight and support it, which is totally fine. <clears throat> but in order to make sure that it's gonna have a straight 
shadowy effect when it's layered amongst all the other things. I always put a few pieces right in the middle. <clears throat> this part tends to be the most tedious part of it all. And then I will often put a piece on here, this side and that side. And that's just to make sure that my, the strip that has the name in it, again, has a little bit of structure to it. Now I know some ladies, they do not peel off all the sticky um, backs and they let a lot of them um, stay on and they only peel off the sticky parts on the four corners. However, I don't do that. And the reason I don't um, is because I have actually found that sometimes when layering, there's the tiniest adjustments that I have to make. <clears throat> and it just so happens that one layer might buckle in the middle. And when that happens, because the, the middle layers don't have the sticky coverings removed, then it, it buckles. But if I remove all the sticky coverings, each layer sticks to itself. So it forces the paper to lay more flat versus allowing a layer to buckle um, and kind of look a little bit odd. So that's my personal preference. Some women are, I'm sure, more magical at lining things up than I ever will be. <clears throat> so this is just how I do it, but you'll develop your own system and and figure out what works for you. So again, I'm just making sure it's in the bottom right corner. I take my second layer, I flip it upside down, and then I line it up in that corner, and I try to make sure it's as even as I can get it in the bottom and along the sides, and I just run my fingers gently over where I know I've got my um, sticky tabs. And then I always flip it over and just take a quick peek to make sure that things are lined up. And it looks like it isn't. So you can see the family isn't quite lined up. So then I will take it off and reline it up. It's not that hard to take off. It, the sticky tape isn't super permanent or anything like that, at least not initially. So when I take it off, it's not a big deal. I realign it up. You can see some sticky pieces came off on the white layer. That's not a big deal because when I put it back down, it's just going to be replaced exactly where they were. Again, not a huge issue. So I'm just going to reline things up again. And honestly, this is like the toughest part of any shadow box is lining things up. So if I take it out, you can look at it. It looks a lot more centered than it did before. And so now I'm happy with this layout. I'm going to flip it back over, put it back in that corner and work on the next layer. I will do this continually <laughs> for all... I think it's 11 layers in this case. Yeah, for all 11 layers. So it is, like I said, it is a little bit tedious doing this part, but it's also the most rewarding, in my opinion, um, because you finally get to see kind of your hard work come to fruition, which of course is always, always nice. And then once I got all my layers together, it will look hopefully pretty amazing. I don't know, this is one I kind of just <laughs> picked really random colors and I hope they 
turn out. I'm also using an eight by eight shadow box. So typically with the family tree, if I want to have each layer be a shadow or be a part, I'll use a nine by nine. And a nine by nine shadow box has a lot more room thickness wise this way than the eight by eights. However, that being said, nine by nine shadow boxes in Canada anyway, or at least a lot more expensive. So if I'm trying to save a bit of coin, I will use an eight by eight and I will glue a few layers together. And I'll show you that a little bit further on. For right now, I create the shadow effect on the first many layers. And I just kind of eyeball it when I'm putting it together. And if it looks like things aren't quite lining up how I want, then I just adjust. Oops. You will do a whole lot of eyeballing. And honestly, I've been, I've made so many of these shadow boxes and my ability to line things up is still not amazing. It takes some time, but you'll figure it out. It takes practice. It's really not super difficult once you kind of get into the hang of it, but getting us started initially can be incredibly frustrating, but don't give up. Do not give up. It is worth it, I promise. Just keep on trucking with your efforts. As I get through more layers, they might sag a bit. And when that happens, um, then I will tend to add another piece of tape just to add a bit more stability. <coughs> Excuse me. But for now, it seems to be looking pretty good. Now on the shadow boxes, when you are lining them up, um, especially with the eight by eights, um, you'll find that when you get the height of your layers gets close to these little tabs, trying to line them up can be difficult because they actually push your paper out a little bit. So when you're using it, it kind of pushes your paper out by you know, a millimeter, half a millimeter. So it becomes difficult. I try and line it up beneath it and then attach it. Now, because I'm doing an eight by eight shadow box, as I explained before, I'm actually gonna tape some layers together. So in this case, I'm going to tape layers six and seven together, eight and nine together, 10 and 11 together. And the reason I do the back um, six layers is because when people are initially looking at the shadow box, having the first number of layers create that shadow effects maintains that shadow effect. So when I tape together my back six layers, it's harder to tell that layers are taped and it still looks like a shadow box versus if I tape my front layers, it's quite obvious that they're taped together and it doesn't 
hold the same effect, um, at least to me. So I tend to shadow the first few layers and then tape the back ones. So I'll show you how I do that now. I have a, I have a tape. I don't know what you call this, a tape runner maybe? Um, I bought this one at Michael's. It's nothing fancy. I am in Canada, so the price I think was six or seven bucks. Probably a lot cheaper in the States. Um, but I mean, it does the job and you can get any and all kinds of tape runners from Michael's or Amazon or, or wherever. Um, <coughs> so what I'm gonna do, this is layer six. This is layer seven. I'm gonna apply the tape on the layer front of layer seven. My tape runner doesn't want to work right now. Oh, I usually have two of these, but it looks like one of my children probably took off with it. Bless their hearts, they love crafts just like their mother. Okay, so I've put tape in each corner and I've put tape across the family part. So now when I'm layering it, you're gonna wanna be very careful because it's tape. So it is not nearly as easy to adjust, readjust if you need to. So I just kinda do my best and then I attach it. Same as I would as if it was a foam piece. So then six and seven are taped. And as you can see, it's not quite as obvious that the back few layers are taped together. So these light blue leaves and these kind of little bit darker branch, that's layer six and seven. And it's not quite as obvious. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take layer eight and nine I'm going to attach layer eight with foam strips and then I'll tape layer nine on. So I still get a little bit of a shadow effect on the back layers, but it, it makes them quite a bit smaller, making it easier to fit in the eight by eight shadow box. Xavier, school. Sorry, my son is home, doing homeschooling today because his class was supposed to do online learning. Give me one second, I will be right back. Okay, I am back. Sorry about that. Just have to get my son set up. Okay, so you can see seven, layer seven is here. I'm going to attach layer eight. As best I can again. Oh no, yeah, no, I did that right, okay. And then I'm going to tape layer nine. Layer nine is the layer that gives your family its background color if you do want a background color. So again, I'm gonna just tape it. Try to line it up as best I can, because with tape it's a little harder. There we go. And 
And then 10 and 11, I typically tape outside of the box just because this is the final layer. So it makes my life a little easier just to do it now. Oh my goodness, I don't know why my tape runner isn't working. And I have two of them and I don't know where the other one is either. Mom life, right? So this guy I typically tape together like this. And try and get it as even as possible. And then I will do my final foam layers, foam squares. And then I will be done. I can show you what it looks like. Again, if I was doing this in the nine by nine shadow box, I would be putting foam pieces between each layer. I wouldn't tape anything together because it wouldn't be necessary. You have enough space in a nine by nine. But unfortunately in Canada, because they're so much more expensive than the three pack of eight by eights, try to save a bit of coin. Okay. So this is my final layer. Yes, it's a little harder. So I just do my best to line it all up. And pray that it works. It may not have, but we'll see. Let's flip this over. Actually, it doesn't look too bad. So now I will put my insert that I took out earlier back in in my layers. They are just a little bit higher than the insert, but hopefully it shouldn't impact it too much. Throw on my back. Here we go. Push these down a touch. Flip it over. And voila, you've got a shadow box. You can see that it is being pushed in a little bit because my front layer right here is being squished. So I probably should have taped two more layers together, but um, it still worked. And as you can tell, it still has the shadow effect in the front. And it's really hard to tell that the back layers are taped together. <clears throat> so it keeps that shadow box effect kind of right there. Uh, if I had a recommendation, I would say maybe tape the first two layers together. So instead of your name having a shadow effect, it would just have a solid white effect, which makes it actually a little bit easier to read. And then tape those back six layers uh, together, two at a time. So layer six and seven, eight and nine, ten and eleven. So yeah, that's how I put a shadow box together. Thanks for watching.